I'm going to go through how to solve using your graphics calculator first, because that's what you're going to do to get credit from it. So a lot of schools actually use a program called Desmos, and they do their whole assessment in Desmos, but we don't, because we don't. Um, so we're going to solve it by using our graphics calculator. So with the graphics calculator, the secret is that we want to draw the picture, put the picture into our graphics calculator, and use the solver in the graphics calculator to find the points we're interested in. Okay? So let's have a look. We'll just do one with A first. So we've got 4 sine A equals 2.5. All right? So it's an equation. It's got an equal sign in it. It's only got one unknown. We only need one equation for one unknown, and that is it. The unknown we are looking for is A. All right? Usually T, because usually it's time. Could be all sorts, any sort of number or letter. In our case, we've been using X up to now. I'm using A today. So the first thing I want to do is I want to draw this graph. It will also give you an idea of the domain that we're interested in. All right? So the domain will normally tell you whether you're interested in, it in radians or in degrees. So if that says 360, my answers are going to be in degrees. If that says 2 pi or a number like 6, then my answers are going to be in radians. All right, so you've got to watch that part to figure out what you're doing. So we'll draw the graph. Four times as big, that's the only difference. So I'm just going to start it, go up to 4 and down to negative 4 pi, 2 pi. All right, so I'm going up, down, up. All right, there's my graph. And it does continue, but I'm only interested in that part. So the next part, so that has nothing to do with the what it's equal to. So the next part is to say, okay, so if that's 4, 2.5 is about here. So that's the extent of my domain. And I'm interested in those two solutions, where that line and the graph has intersected. This one and this one. Okay, so there's going to be two answers in this case. Both of them need to be there, and as I said, it will normally be that they're looking for when it's above this or below this. So you'd be saying, if it was above, from here to here, in a mathematical language like that, X will be between this value and this value, or if it was below, it would be this bit and all of this bit. All right, so you're covering the intervals of the graph. So on our graphics calculator, we need to make sure we're in radians, and we go to graph, All right, and what's it, menu three, and push F1, F1, what's it, push three, no, I've gone into stack mode for some reason when I've done that. All right, so we've gone into graph mode, and make sure that you've got a y1 equals, all right? Otherwise, you aren't in the right mode of graph mode. So if you've got a y1 equals, you can now write in this part. That's y1. y1 equals, so you're writing in 4 sine x, and it's always x, and we use this button here, x theta T. All right, don't go alphabeticalizing it. You know, just push that button and the X jumps in. All right, that, so that's that one. Then we drop down to Y2 and we put the line in. So the line is 2.5. Next part we need to do is set it up so it shows us the part of the graph we want. All right, so we're going to go and enter it, then we're going to change the view window, so shift view window, and we're going to make the minimum for x to be 0 to 2 pi. And you can write 2 pi in, there's no problem with writing 2 pi in. 2 pi 
and then move past the scale part down to Wyman. Yep. Should be, yes. Good job. So, um, yeah, four signings, that's what we draw. Um, y min is going to be just under negative four. You don't want to have the window too tight. So I'm going to put negative 4.2. Thank you, Alice. And maximum 4.2. Just to make sure I can see the whole lot. And then draw. Enter, enter. E, X, T. Draw. Now you should have a picture looking vaguely like what you've got, what I've got on the board. Yes? Good. So the part that's really now interesting is to find the answers. And to find the answers, we use G-Solve, and we're looking for the intersection between those two things. So G-Solve. And F5, and then we use the arrows just to move across. So the first one, the answer is hopefully 0.675. So this one comes out as 0.675, and then we move along to find this one, and we get 2.466. Alright, and that's how we do it on the calculator, Danny. So G solve is shift and above F5. Okay? And then F5 for intersect or ISCT, and then it should come up with your first answer. This one down the bottom, and then you push that cross arrow to get to the next one. All right, so that's how to use your graphics calculator. Put in whatever you've got on this side of the equals as your first graph, put in what you're solving against as your second graph, make sure you use the view window to define the area you're interested in, not get a whole lot of random extras. Check it against your sketch to make sure one, you've put it in right, or two, you've drawn it right, whichever one is necessary. But if they don't match, you need to figure out what you've done wrong, all right? And then you're allowed to just write the answers down, okay? And use them to find whatever the answer is that they're trying to find. The thing is that this is an equation, and we can solve it using just algebra. So, if we were solving four sine a equals 2.5. The first thing we would do in solving algebra would be divide by both sides by 4. So if we're dividing both sides by 4, 2.5 divided by 4 is 0 0.625. Using our knowledge of trig, we inverse sign this, 0 0.625, and we get second function sign point. Is, well, what do you know? 0 0.675. It will normally give you the first answer. All right? That first answer is usually the one closest to the y-axis. So it may be a negative. So in this case, the one closest to the axis was this one. That's what it's given us. To get the other answers, we have to understand how the graphs work. So in this case, to get the other answer, we have found that this length here is 0.675, right? This is 0, this is 3.14, this is 6.28, and further on, this distance from here to there is 0.675. There's another distance there that we can use to find the other one. We know this is pi. And we know this distance is 0.675 because these graphs are symmetrical. It's symmetrical around this point here. That distance is exactly the same as that distance. All right? So if I know that point, I can find that one by going pi minus that much. 
And that's the algebraic way to solve it. And pi minus 0 0.675, I don't need, I need to figure that out, I can just read it off the board, 466, that's what it's going to give me. So those are my two answers. All right? Let's have a look if we're doing D, what happens. Now, yes, Hayden. Um, hypothetically, if you wanted to solve an answer past 2 pi x, would you add 2 pi to 0 0.67? Hypothetically and perfectly, yes. Right, so that same rule keeps repeating all the way along every pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. We can keep going plus this one, minus that one, plus this one, minus that one. That generalizes something called a general solution. And you do actually get the formula for the general solution on your formula sheet for the exams, even though they don't do trick with that. But that's all right. So then we go to this one. So this one says that the cosine graph has been lifted up three. It hasn't got a multiplier, so I'm not interested in that. And when you're sketching the graph, guys, when you're sketching the graph, you do not need to worry about going from zero, all right? Quite happy for you to go from wherever, because you might be dealing with between 1,000 and 1,020. We don't want that to look like this big, because you needed to have 1,000 underneath it. We want 1,000 here and 1,020 here, okay? So it doesn't matter just within that range, we need to make sure the scale's kept pretty close. So cosine graph looks like C, so it goes down and up. That's pi, that's 2 pi. What interval are we going to find it between? We're only going to find it between 0 and pi. So we're actually only interested in that much of it. Where is 2.8? It's here. So we're looking for that one point and that only. All right, so the, the domain has been struck to here to here. We're not interested in that one because it's outside the domain, only this one here. So we put in our calculator in the same way. Go back, change graph. To cosine x plus 3, change point to 2.8, draw your picture. And I didn't change the scale because I knew it was going to still show that because I had from 4 here. So I was looking at this bit here. I was happy. So I've got that picture. Use my G-solve. Go across. Find my intersection. And the answer is 1.772. How many decimal points do you reckon we're rounding to? Two or three. Okay. Yeah. Definitely no less than that, and we don't want the whole lot. Yeah. All right, but it's not a thing. It's not going to stop you. It's just what you end up writing. Okay, so what we need to do next is to figure out how to solve it by hand. So that's not very difficult either, because we're just going to subtract 3 from the other side, and then inverse it to find it. And if we do that, it will come out with 1.772. All right, so it's just using our algebra. And we can mix these two together. One, and just find it on our graphics calculator. No problems. Two, we can solve it slowly by first dividing by, sorry, first subtracting, then dividing by, then inverse signing or causing, and finding the answer. So it's just one step, two step, three steps for two of them, or one step, two step for, two, for one of them. Just watch your domain. <laughs>